is telling us rahmati my mercy encompasses everything but who will i write it for this is something amazing that allah is telling us rahmati my mercy encompasses everything but who will i write it for who deserves it i will write it for those and when allah says i will write it he has written it he says i will write it for those who have taqwa those who give charities to the poor and zakah also means to develop yourself your character your conduct and your qualities the heart needs to be cleansed when it comes to how it interacts with the rest of creation so taqwa zakat and those who believe firmly in our signs those who believe in our signs they have taqwa and they have and they give zakat those are the ones whom we will write our mercy for my brothers and sisters these things depict two major aspects of our relationships taqwa is to develop the correct relationship with allah to have enough love of allah that would keep you away from that which is bad and harmful to you as well as displeasing to allah I, I love Allah so much. I don't want to displease him. So it is, it is something, it is a fear that is born out of love. That's something people don't explain. Usually when someone says fear Allah, I mean, I, I'm not scared to the degree that I I'm petrified of meeting him. No, I must love him to the degree that I don't want to disobey him because I fear his displeasure and his anger. It's true. I fear his punishment as well out of love. Imagine when you love someone and I always give this example, a spouse, you just newly got married and you really love your spouse. Notice I said newly married because later on only Allah knows what happens. <laughs> May Allah bless us all and grant us all the happiest of marriages. I mean, so, you know, when you newly married and you don't want to say anything that will actually hurt your spouse, not because you fear them, but because you fear hurting them, you fear upsetting them out of love. It's love. So it's the love of Allah. The love of Allah is everything. That love of Allah, the taqwa is born out of love of Allah. And that includes fear. Because you actually fear the displeasure of Allah, the wrath of Allah, the anger of Allah, the punishment of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us quite clearly. He is saying something amazing. He says, Taqwa. On one hand, they develop the correct relationship with Allah. And on the other hand, you turn a zakah. They develop the correct relationship with the human beings around them. The poor, the downtrodden, the people who don't have as much as you, the people around you, how do you treat them? Do you give them? And notice a charity in Islam, as much as zakah is monetary and material, without a doubt. But charity in Islam goes beyond material giving. The hadith says your smile at the face of your fellow brother is a charity. Subhanallah, your expression on your face, come in, have hashash, bashash, you're happy, you're smiling. Salamu alaikum, how are you my brother, etc, etc. And you're looking so good, mashallah. And that is actually a charity. It is a huge charity. Sometimes it is priceless. Sometimes people don't need your money. The people in your masjid, for example, in your locality, in your areas, they may not need your money. They just need you to be a genuine, sincere person who cares for them as much as they care for themselves. Today, westernization is taking over. And one of the weaknesses is people are becoming selfish. It's all about me, myself and I. I must grow, I must have the money, I must have the business, I must have the goodness and everybody else, nothing. I don't care and I'm not bothered. But if I'm doing well, I am okay. I'm sitting in my house, me and my kids are doing well and that's it. No, a true mu'min. Did you look for the poor? Did you find them? Did you reach out to them? Did you give them with respect and dignity? That's what it is. Today we have organizations, Al Imdad, Abdullah Aid, whoever else it may be across the globe, genuine people who are doing our work for us. So we are lucky by right. We were supposed to look out for the poor, search for them, hunt them, respect them, honor them, give them with dignity because my pillar of Islam is being fulfilled by your presence in our community and society. If you were not here, how would I have fulfilled zakat? Even if I have the millions and there is a sign of Qiyamah that tells us there will come a time when nobody will be accepting zakat because everybody is going to be loaded. The youngsters say, hey, I can't wait for that time. Hey, I need the money, man. Subhanallah. But you don't realize a door will be closed. Mashallah, may Allah make this rain that we're having right now, the rain of mercy. Beautiful rain, mashallah. May Allah make it the rain of mercy and not the rain of adab. 
So as I'm saying, zakah, what is that all about? Why does Allah say, my rahmah? My rahmah will descend on those who have a good relationship with me. Your taqwa will lead you to your proper dress code. Your taqwa will lead you to leaving things that are doubtful. Something you're doubting, quit it. People ask me, you know, am I allowed to do this, for example? And I say, subhanallah, you know, they will ask you. I'm just giving you an example. They'll ask you, you know, there is a nail polish that I uh, came across and they've sworn that it's permeable. And so can I use this nail polish? And I'll tell them, you know what? If, you're, if you use it and you believe that it's permeable because they told you that and half the world is telling you it's not. If you have taqwa, you're going to say, listen, I'm not going to compromise my relationship with Allah because of one inch of paint. I'll use something else. I'll use henna. That's the best answer. I don't want to get into the debate as to whether it's permeable or not. I have enough taqwa or I should be having enough taqwa. May Allah strengthen us to say, you know what? My relationship with Allah is more important. Leave it. You find a place people are saying halal, people are saying haram. Eat veggies that day. You know why? Because my relationship with Allah is far greater than a burger. It's far greater than the chips. But sometimes people are prepared to compromise that relationship. May Allah strengthen us. My beloved brothers and sisters, that is taqwa. Taqwa is when you can take your time in salah. Taqwa is when you can enjoy what ibadah you are fulfilling for the sake of Allah. When you do that, Allah says, my rahmah will be written for you. And automatically you need a relationship with who? With the other people. Allah created them, your neighbors, the people who you might not have liked. It's easy to be good to someone you like. What about those who don't really get along with you? Are you good to them? Are you genuine to them? Are you okay? Will you reach out to them? Will you go out and look for them and be kind to the poor and so on? That is called yu'tuna zakah. You know what? Allah says, those who believe in our signs. And you know who are those? Amazing verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are the ones who follow the messenger who was unlettered. Unlettered, by the way, does not refer to uneducated, astaghfirullah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most highly educated. He was educated by Allah. He was given the gift. He knew more than everyone put together. So Allah didn't want him to read and write simply because he didn't want them to say that he read from elsewhere and he wrote something. And that's quite clear in the Quran. Allah says, had he been able to read or write, then some people might have come to create doubts. But Allah says, you know what? He was the most highly educated to this day. We have teachings that will bowl mid wicket, will bowl out any educated person. Look at the virus that has taken over by storm. Tell me the role of the black seed. Tell me the role of the oil, the black seed oil and what it played and continues to play. And where did it come from? Subhanallah. What did they find its contents? Did they not find the contents of it, including some chloroquine? Subhanallah. Who taught us? When we say unlettered, we are never ever referring to something derogatory or something blasphemous. May Allah grant us ease. Those who want to achieve the Rahmah of Allah, they will follow the Nabi. They will follow his path. They will follow his way. And why? Because whatever he brought was good. Whatever he, dis whatever he told us not to do was bad. And he enjoined that which was good. And he told us to enjoin what is good. He discouraged and prohibited evil and he told us to prohibit evil. If you follow his path, you will definitely be successful. Allah says, those are the ones who are successful. I just want to recap and remind myself and yourselves to say, if we would like to be protected from the punishment of Allah, we need definitely if we want to be protected by the, from the punishment of Allah, we need to seek the forgiveness of Allah. May Allah forgive us. If we want the mercy of Allah, we must develop a relationship with Allah, be kind to fellow human beings, 
and follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us every success.